Hello, everybody. This is Ryan from Pi Records. I'm here with Dave Smalley and Marcella Pesoa. Am I saying that right? Pesoa? Marcelo Pesoa. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, how are you guys doing today? We had some. We had a. We had a quick, interesting story you were talking about before uh, we went on. So you want to talk about oh, that? Sure. Sure. So uh, first of all, Ryan, thanks for uh, thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Um, and. Uh, Great to see you again, Marcelo. Uh, miss you, brother. So, um, so we, Marcelo and I did a solo show. We did a, a, a whole solo, uh, not solo, a duet tour, the two of us playing in Europe. Um, maybe two weeks worth of shows, something like that, Marcelo? Yeah, yeah, something and, like that. It uh, was great. We, we had some great times, both musically and as friends. And um, we played in the in Berlin the Ramones Museum which I didn't even know there was one uh it's set up by a, obviously a huge fan of the Ramones and um I think the person who owned it had met them many times and knew certainly the surviving members of the Ramones um like Marky and stuff like that and mm -hmm. so um so anyway uh, at the end of the night um he gave me a hat from the from the event, uh, which was a cool trucker hat with the Ramones logo, but it says the Ramones Museum on it. Oh, and it wow. was super cool and I loved it. And one of the things that people probably don't know who haven't been on tour, you know, for, for so much of their lives is uh, it's easy to lose things on tour. You're every day you're in a different place, you're traveling, you're going, every meal is at a different restaurant or uh you know mcdonald's or you know whatever it is and or downstairs in the lobby the hell just get the hotel just get a, a an orange and a cup of coffee or whatever it is you're always moving and it's really really easy so you take your hat off you know and and you set it down and and anyway long story short is somewhere along the way i i misplaced that hat and i'm super upset about it i i love that hat it was my favorite baseball cap up in skater hat so um i have to get another one somehow uh, someday so so i have a backup here which is a ramones hat you know but um not the uh not the one from where we played which makes me sad and lonely i have my uh my backup oh, we gotta play there again man this is my backup hey. t-shirt nice <laughs> nice that's a good looking shirt you look good in that i you like no no yeah, I think we'll make you our poster boy for the next, uh, you know, for the next uh, DBL or whatever model shoot. Because you're you're perfect. You're 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 our age bracket of our, you know, of our most of our fans are are you know they're not 18, right? I, I love 18 year olds to come see us, but mostly they're you know 25 to 55 or whatever. I don't know the range, but yeah. they're not not little kids. And then um, and then you know you got tattoos all over the place, which is yeah. great. And um, you got cool uh, horn-rimmed glasses, which is also great. So, and uh, you, you, oh, by the way, we'll, we'll use you for half and then we'll use your lovely and talented wife as the other half because she's awesome. And so uh, she can be, you will have the, um, the Haggerty family as the, uh, you know, as, as the, uh, pin up, the pinup children. <laughs> well, that's, uh... I'm I'm terrified to death to be on camera, but Jen is Jen is very very comfortable. Oh, she does those ad, the I don't know what to call them those those uh, they're not ads. What do you call them? Those things that you do. Um, that she promo does. videos. Promo videos. She does those promo videos. Amazing. Um, that I, I really enjoy them. She's enthusiastic and she's knowledgeable and. Um, it, you know, it looks great, the setup, the way she does it. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, she's, uh, she's a smart cookie. Yep, for sure. So uh, what I need to talk to you about is first, I want to start off with joining Outsiders. Uh, that's been about, well, about a year and a half that's been out. Yes, yes, it was, it's almost one and a half years, yeah. yeah. Crazy, I didn't think it had been that long, that's wild. <laughs> yeah, man. I know, when I got that in the mail, I got the tricolor, and I, I put it on right away, and I was like, oh, this reminds me 
this reminds me of of old old Dave Smalley music. But I also was like, who are these musicians? Like I was blown away. Uh, what made you guys to get together? How did you meet, and why is it special? I mean, it's special to me because the more music, the better. Yeah, Marcelo, take it away. So, um, so I think it's a, a long and beautiful story because I met this gentleman. Uh, it was a long time ago, I think, twenty years ago in Buenos Aires. You know, I was a great fan of his music. And and I remember Don Balot was playing in the center of the town there in Buenos Aires. And then I said to my 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 colleagues, "Hey, let's go there after a you know skate park session, you know skateboarding session. Let's go to see Don Balot there." And then you know, to me, it was the greatest band ever, really, really. I love all the punk rock bands, the Ramones for sure, but but, but you know, for me, Don Balot at, at, at that time was like the most beautiful modern punk rock thing, you know? And then we were there, I met Dave and Sam and all the rest of the guy. It was Milo Todesco playing drums, I remember. Yeah. At the time. It was Fly the Flag, something like that. Fly the Flag record. Fly the Flag. And, and we met in a, in a corner in a pizzeria, pizza store, you know, something like that. And I gave them some records from my band. And it was a great show and next year, we played together because we were uh, uh, we were playing a supporter band from from them from Don Bailo and then and then to me it was like touch the heaven with my hands you know what I mean uh, play with my favorite band and be there on stage with them you know and you know the life bring me to Europe years later and then we we were in touch in, you know inter interchanging uh, some emails. To do something together, I don't know for what reason. I don't know for what reason. And um, I think it was uh, 12 years ago. I decided to organize an acoustic uh, tour with with Dave, and I emailed him, say, "Hey, let's do something together in Spain." And he said, "For sure, man." <laughs> that was great. You know, two guys playing acoustic guitars. You know, all over Spain. Uh, getting getting tight you know and and really that, that that was great and and then we were in touch all the time and and after that I was with another tour and another tour and the bandoleros and pablo came in you know and dave uh, knows gus drummers the guys here from spain is the greatest band punk rock band here in spain they are super great fan of dave's music and it's like a, it's like a, you know, worldwide team. You know what I mean? And then we decide to do some music together. And then we said, okay, let's do it. We ask Dave and say, hey man, that's great. And then that's the point. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, yeah. How did Jury okay. Outsiders come together? Well, let, before we jump in, I just wanted to add in, you know, Marcelo is a very modest guy, but um, one of the reasons that I, wanted to do all that is because of, you know, you mentioned Pablo, um, you know, on, on, on the other guitar as well as, as well as Marcelo and, and the, and, and Javi and Rafa, the other two guys in the Bandoleros. Um, what made this an easy decision for me to do was because, you know, you need two parts, right? You, you need first, before even the musicianship, you need the camaraderie, the friendship before, before the musicianship. Because you can have a great player, but if they're not a great guy or gal, it's it's worthless. You know, it's not it's not a joy. But you also need it if you're a professional musician. You need to work with great musicians. You know, like I I, I think that you always want to aim higher than yourself, or at least to your level. And um, you know, they say the the best way to become a good skier is to ski behind somebody who's really good. You oh. know, so. So for me, um, I'd seen the gas drummers and I'd seen Marcella play in different bands. And obviously we did our acoustic thing together. And all these guys are wonderful musicians. Um, they, and what I love about them, they're super talented. They're super cool dudes. I mean, really close, close friends now. And, but they play with joy. 
That's a huge thing. You don't see a lot of joy anymore in music. You see a lot of professional bands playing and doing their set, but you get the feeling that it's just a set for some bands, you know, that's the same thing they played in the night before and the night after. And it doesn't have a lot of joy to it. That doesn't mean it's bad, but it's not joyful. The Bandoleros and playing with these guys, it's, it's so happy. It's joyful. Not all the songs are happy. Not all the lyrics are happy, but the, 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 the pleasure of the playing together, it's really, really nice. I, uh, I've been able to see a lot of videos on YouTube of you guys playing in Spain. And uh, Pablo is the other guitarist. He's amazing. And uh, I, I'm glad there's so many out there because uh, your live show is spectacular to watch. I don't get to see you over here, but I get to see you on YouTube. Yeah, we need to... We need to come over here. We were going to be in North America this year until uh, COVID, uh, you know, yeah. COVID came and kicked us in the in the uh, in the ass. So yeah. nobody got to nobody got to go. But we were really looking forward to some North America dates. Canada, not the U.S., but uh, at least it would have been the right direction, you know. Yeah. But um, we'll try it again next year. What do you? Uh, I, I I've been listening to the Ignited Seven Inch that just came out. It's fantastic. It, it, like, like I was telling uh, Marcelo, it just sounds like you guys took it up to another level. Yeah, I think so. Marcelo, you, you helped write most of those songs. What do you think? Um, yeah, what's up with Ryan about it? Um, I'm, personally, I'm, I'm very happy and very proud about that songs. Um, you know, knowing the Dave's quality, you know, voice and melodies, for us really, it's not difficult to write songs. You know, you know what I mean? Knowing his abilities to, to do something, we, we know he's here, so. Oh, is the right way, you know, and then when you play with your friend, your friends are good players and you have fun. It's easy. I, I think not easy, but not easy because the guys are in the South of Spain. I'm in the West, you know, uh, Davis in the States. But this is, this is just a matter of technology. But, but from our heart, it's, it's not so difficult. You know what I mean? It's not so complicated. It's just follow our hearts, our, you know, our feelings, our memories, and this and that, and that's it. This is the reason why we are writing new songs, Dave. This is a, this is a new for you. Awesome, awesome, so it's excited. A good news for you. <laughs> so excited, yeah. Uh, I wanna say my, my favorite song by you guys is My Funeral Pyre. Uh, it, oh. it really, really hit me hard when, when I first heard that song, it was just, I don't, I don't know what it was about. I, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it right now. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, that song, because um, it's got a little bit of, of uh, menace to it in part of the song, like a little bit of uh, undertone of, of uh, you know, almost danger. Um, and then, um, but then the beautiful parts are beautiful, you know, so it's this really interesting um, juxtaposition of of moods i think in that song well somebody's got a doggy so, is rondo yeah, my dogs love that song as well man you know rondo you know my dog yeah right? man of course oh poor doggies oh so, sorry for that oh no no that's I, a real life <laughs> so uh what what do people expect from the ignited uh ep um got five songs uh, what makes this different than the first album Dave please you can take it on yeah yeah of course um, so um, I think it's well I I'm kind of one thing that I'm really happy about is that um, the 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 new EP um, does 
I think there's a lot of times when the second record of a band is either not as good or very different from the first album. There's a lot of bands. I mean, you could go through rock history and it's called the sophomore curse, you know? Yeah. And um, bands are, they, their first album is made with, you know, usually very little time, very little money, um, you're, or, and, and they're just inspired, they're burning. Then they get a great first record and, and then they start to evolve as musicians and as songwriters, they start to try different things. They've got a little more time to write, a little more time to record. Sometimes the second album is slower. Um, it's not always, but I think, you know, you see it a lot in rock. And um, I mean, I saw it with Down By Law when, when Blue came out, you know, people who loved the first record, there were a lot of people who were like, I don't like this, you know, the second record. And it was a little different. And there are some different tones on Blue and different songs, you know. And um, so that being said, we didn't do that with this album for the Bandoleros. Um, it's like the first album only on steroids, you know? Um, so, so it's everything you loved about the first album, which I also loved, you know, honestly. Um, I, uh, I, I think you have to love your own ba band and your own albums. I don't wanna be falsely modest and say, oh, I don't literally listen to my own stuff. I want to listen to what I recorded. I want to hear it. If I love it, there's a better chance that you will love it and that other people will love it. If I don't love it, then why should anyone listen to it? Right. You know? Yeah. So, so I have no shame in, in saying that you should love your own stuff, whatever. Or for your case, you know, you should love what you guys do with Pi Records and be proud of it or whatever it is that you do in life, you know, um, it, it's, uh, you should be proud of it and, and enjoy it and want to, see it more but anyway we we really i think built higher on the first record on this on this ep and so if you love the first stuff um you'll love the uh the, the new one the new one and you know you know what ryan um uh the good thing about ignited is that um we wrote the songs with the guys with the rest of bandoleros um during their rehearsals for our first tour you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was it was before the Join the Outsiders tour. And then probably this is a kind of magic, you know? We were working in Cadiz in South Spain, working for the tour, you know, we are seeing the you know, the the Join the Outsiders songs, but at the same time we were writing the new songs. So it's like a same level of energy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um and then um, I think we, we didn't have the time to, you know, to be, to be, you know, boring and what we're going to do, what we're going to do, you know, it was a, right at the same time. I remember we were, do you remember Dave, we were in England after I think it was Manchester, I, I can't remember. Do you remember we were sleeping in a family house, super big, three, three floors. Uh, yeah, I remember, remember that? that house. Yeah, that was great. I remember that uh, this day, after my morning shower, I was talking with Pablo about the new songs. Do you remember we were in the band listening to the new stuff? We, we were doing yes. it in the, yeah. in, the, uh, in the practice room. And then I brought to Bill Stevenson. Hey man, we're the bandoleros, you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have new songs, hey man, I'll do it for you guys. We're gonna do it. And that was amazing. It was, we were in the middle of a Join the Outsiders tour, and then we got the we got the great new to work with Bill Stevenson for Ignited, and then that was like, Pluff, let's do it, you know. This yeah. is the reason why I think uh, you can feel this energy on the yeah. songs, you know. It, it uh, that that must that must have been quite an inspiration because I heard Bill Stevenson really loves the band. He does. Uh, I think you might know that I just did uh, last fall some, some uh, reunion show with all. And, yeah. Um, so, so um, it was for the, to celebrate the anniversary of the blasting room mm -hmm. uh, studios. And, um, and I just remember being in the downstairs uh, dressing room with Bill and we're talking and 
you know, Bill is not, um, he doesn't just say stuff. Um, he'll say stuff that he means. And um, he, uh, we just were talking about the Bandoleros for a second and he said, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the real deal right there. You know, uh, you know, and, and he said, those guys are really, really good. And he said, I want to do more, you know, yeah, of course. Thank you. You know, that's great. You know, so, um, so for him to say that was, was quite a compliment to the band. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so have you written some more songs like in your, in your time off? Uh, are you making any long-term plans? Dave? I'm sitting here waiting for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, to be honest, um, I sent to the guys, I think, 14 demos, something like that. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Man, I'm a busy guy, darling. <laughs> and, um, and then we are discussing, you know, who is good enough to be, to be, you know, to, to, you know, to think about, to be good to, for the next record. And um, that we're working on it. And then we have some plans for the next month, but have to wait because with this virus situation, you can't say anything, you know, because yeah. here in Spain right now, everything is shut down. So I think in three weeks, they will open the, the borders. But they always say that three weeks later, the virus will be back. And, uh, you know, you can't plan a lot of things, but we can we can write some some songs we we are we are on it we are on it and to be honest i'm really happy uh what we are doing you know really happy and then we're gonna we're gonna send you dave the thing i think in 25 years and then <laughs> no no <laughs> no no as soon as possible i think uh in a couple of months, we can set you something, and then you can hear the demos and then write your beautiful lyrics and, you know. And in September, we we, we have some plans, you know, yeah. you know what uh, I mean, Dave? Well, I need, uh, I need the meatballs, brother, you know. Meatballs, oh, you know, you know, Ryan, Dave, uh, Addis, South Spain, beautiful place beach sunny place good food super nice people this is like to live in holidays every day you know and this is the plan we are we are working on you know to plan a new recording session with this man here in spain with us and probably to do a documentary about the new record ah uh, that's the surprise awesome. hey nice <laughs> that's awesome yeah you know uh, you know probably two weeks all the time together, playing, you know, and um, working on the studio, uh, eating, you know, spending some time together, you know, because we are friends, we're like brothers. So this is life, you know. I love it. I love it. I'm in. So uh, what I wanted to ask you about is how you record, how I, Dave, I heard your the studio that you were at was was uh, closed. Sam said it was closed for right now, so the down by law sessions were kind of on a back burner right now. Yeah, actually, I just heard from the studio owner, uh, who's a great guy uh, today, and he said, um, "How's Thursday?" And I said, "Yeah, sounds good." So oh, this, wow. this, week, this week coming up, I'll I'll try and be in and finish uh finish the vocals for for uh for that album we did five and i think i have like seven more or something Ooh. Like that. oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah um so is that the same studio you record all your vocals in yeah it's where i did um most of the vocals for um for almost i've done all the vocals for the bandoleros there and the last two Down by Law albums and, and the Don't Sleep, most of the Don't Sleep vocals. I did a couple other places, but uh, 
at least some of the don't I did all the don't I did all the uh, demos for don't sleep for the songs that I wrote there as well so yeah it's it's my it's uh it's it's an independent business a guy who's um you know um uh has his own studio and is a fantastic musician um and um jeff covert and he's great and we we have great conversations and a great uh, artistic collaboration so um yeah, it's been it's been really a positive uh, karma place to be that's awesome uh i'm very happy for you guys uh that that you all found each other because i feel like uh you've given me and a lot of other people a, a great gift of music thank you brother thank you well thank you Ryan. for the bandoleros man uh, look uh, on my screen marcelo's down at the bottom middle so i'll say look down at the bottom middle um because he he writes a lot of that stuff and um uh, they all do, but, you know, Marcelo is one of the main guys. Oh, and the other th thing about Marcelo, besides being El Diablo on the one hand, but on the other hand, he sings like an angel, like a, like a beautiful songbird. <laughs> He's El Diablo on one hand and an angel on the other hand. So I don't know. But now his, his singing is a big part of, and the backup vocals, you know, and Javi too, you know, does a lot of singing too. And, and Marcelo, and, uh, and, and Pablo. So, um, does Rafa sing too on the albums? Uh, no, no, he was on the controls. Yeah. Better, that's yeah. better. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the same for me. If I go near a drum set, a drummer, <laughs> oh, you know, don't let him near the drum set. You know, so uh, drumming Dave Hunter up. You know, you know what's the funny thing about about the guys? Uh, I remember when we were doing the back vocals for the Join the Outsiders album. You know, I went to Cardiff to to do the solo guitars, you know, and and the back vocals. You know, uh, we got your your lead vocals on the studio, and then okay, let's work around this. And then you know, I remember I was trying to do some different melodies or something, and Rafa was on the other side of the window, you know. And I can hear him say, hey, stop him, stop him. That's horrible. You know, that's horrible. <laughs> you know oh, with the fucking same joke, you know, the engineers. <laughs> yeah. Because Rafa, the drummer, is a, is a studio engineer as well. So he's always, you know, and I, I was singing and oh, stop him, stop him, please. You know? <laughs> okay. Yeah, always happen. That, that's classic. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, and you know, you know, Ryan, um, and I'm sure that they will agree with that. Is with the bandoleros, we have some, you know, we have fun all the time, all the time, all the time. I would, you know, uh, the guys from the the guys from the south of Spain, they have another blood, man. They are always laughing. Everything is a joke for them. <laughs> Life is a joke, and this is this is great. You know, this is great because. Um, because sometimes, really, sometimes I need, I need to think like this, you know, everything yeah. is a fucking joke, you know, yeah. and then I'm so happy to work with them, to work with my favorite singer, my brother, you know, this is the, I think this is the, this is the, the heart of Bandoleros, you know, yeah. to be a, to be a real team, you know, to be a real team. Yeah. yeah it's quite a, it's quite an honor to talk to you guys. Um, well, how did you hook up with Graham in Little Rocket Records? Did he come out and see you guys? No, it was. Uh, it was. I think uh, we were. You know, we we were working on the demos, and with Javi, Javi was was working with uh, with uh, with the labels. He was sending some you know some information to different labels all over the world and he got he got a good connection with him you know and then we decided we all decided to work with him you know and then that was a story easy you know it was easy yeah. for us you know it's it's good uh, Graham is is such a a great guy um, so I'm glad you have that connection with him Dave 
Yeah, I think um, it really wasn't me that created the connection, but uh, there's definitely a good one. And um, he's a cool dude. And, um, you know, we've kind of, I think, um, it's interesting because in the old days of music, you would, you know, like even with, with uh, you know, Down by Law and Brett, we'd, we'd hang out a lot together, you know, um, in the studio or just going over to the label and hanging out, going to get lunch, you know, or, or whatever. We'd go see Bad Religion. Some of them would come see Down by Law, you know, um, just, you know, there's a lot of personal connections or time together, personal time together. Uh, for this one, um, I, I hadn't met Graham uh, until we played in, um, forget what city, what was that city? Leeds, I think. Leeds. Leeds, okay. In UK, so, yeah. Um, yeah, he came to Leeds and then um, uh, we met him, cool dude, you know, but just interesting now technology has allowed there to be entire, you know, an entire connection and business artistic creation, you know, without ever having met in person. So that's an interesting thing that's different from the old school ways of doing it. But for punk rock, I think you always still have to have a connection of spirit. And, um, you know, so I think we definitely have that, um, you know, so that, that's been good. We've had a couple of bumps here and there, but they've been minor bumps and we, we got it figured out. And yeah, so it's good. Super, super excited. It was uh, at a show in, in Lancaster where I brought my family to meet you. Um, I, I had in my head, once I heard the show was coming for Don't Sleep, I, I said, Jen, I want you to meet Dave. Uh, like, I, you, you have to meet Dave. He's, the, he's so great. And then I wanted to bring my kids and I just wanted them to see how much you meant to me and that you were a really great guy. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah, I remember that uh, very well, right outside on the front of, um, of uh, I forget the name of that club, but I remember it with the place um, very well. We were on the sidewalk right in front and you have beautiful family. So it was really great to see that, you know, and um, I follow you guys. I kind of uh, stalk you guys um, on <laughs> Facebook, you know, so I, I see all the like soccer awards and pictures of your oh, son yeah. sliding around on the backyard slide, water slippy slide thing yeah. and I, I i stalk you guys yeah so um <laughs> yeah, it's good uh, yeah. it's surprising like growing up on punk rock where i am right now because the great joy is to watch my kids become good people yeah for sure and uh just having met them those couple of times that i met them they were they were awesome so doing something right there dad keep going we're trying we're trying it's is there anything else you guys want to talk about that maybe people don't know about the Bandoleros or some, some stories that you might want to tell? Um, no, just to say thank you very much, man, to support us, you know, and, um, and that we are working on new songs, man. And, you know, the Bandoleros, uh, uh, have plans for the 2021, right? Canada, they for sure. Uh, Europe, we have some offers to do Europe, but you know, at the moment we don't have 100% date. But we want to do new songs and and to have fun. And and would be really nice that if uh, our sub September plan can be reality, you know, can 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 you know. Uh, because uh, we can play in a cool festival here in, in Cadiz. We can play uh, small shows, but the most important thing is we can play together in a studio and new songs and have, having fun with your favorite meebles, Dave, going to the beach, you know, having fun. Just talking about life and, and you know, and do some... 11, 12 songs, new songs, with all of our hearts, you know? Yeah, sounds fantastic. I'm so excited. I hope it can happen for sure. But, you know, one thing I will, just to add to what Marcelo just said, I think there's a tendency 
and I do it too, it's easy to put on your favorite album from, you know, from the past and really love it, right? My War, you know, or, you know, or, or um, you know, whatever, the, the jam Ahmad Khan's or, or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, there you go, the Beach Boys, Pet Sounds, perfect, oh, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> easy to do that, and you should do that. You should always keep track of your roots and, and your, your love of what made you who you are. But I will say that um, there's a different kind of joy in listening to new music that's really vibrant and really alive and, and uh, current and joyful and, and, and inspiring. And I, I think that the Bandoleros is that, that band. Um, I don't think we, the, the musicians are too good for it to ever not be really good and, uh, and joyful. And, 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 you know, if I do my job right, then I will match what they do. And um, that's why those first two releases by the Bandoleros are so, again, just joyous, you know, and, and they make you feel good. Um, and there's not a lot that always does that anymore, you know. So, um, so I'm really excited to do new stuff with the Bandoleros. And I encourage everyone, including me, to remember that there's brilliant new music out there. Um, so it's great to put on um, your classic stuff that you love from, from your growing up years. Um, but um, for instance, I would say Down By Law's newer stuff is just as good, if not better, than anything that we did in the early 90s. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's like, oh, how can you say that? You know, and Punk Rock Academy and the first album and all that stuff. And I love those albums. We still play them and everything, but um, the, the new albums like All In from Down By Law is, mm -hmm. it's a great album. And- um, uh, It is. Thanks. It man. is. Thank you, man. And, and so Sammy is writing amazing songs. Um, so, you know, where I'm going with this is look forward to some new Bandoleros because it's, it's gonna be, I, I can guarantee you, I will, I will give you a guarantee. It'll be great. <laughs> That's awesome. And I know, I know it will be. Um, I just can't wait till this lockdown has been lifted and everybody can get back to normal. Um, I, I've been talking to a lot of bands and since I'm not at work, this is my time to help as much as I possibly can. And that's what I'm trying to do. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm very... I'm so excited that I that we got to talk, and uh, I just wanted to give you my thanks for me and my family for for your time. I know everybody's trying to get everything in order, but I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it to teach me to you know to organize my Zoom thing. You yeah, know, I was a day was I was one hour trying to set up the zoom you know in my mobile wow that's that's the first <laughs> that's the first time ever that that the the old punk rock veteran guy is ahead <laughs> of, of, the, uh, of the younger and you know what veteran. ryan told me ryan told me hey man don't feel bad about it you know because he saw me i was i was so sad for that you know i was one hour trying the camera didn't work and i said hey man <laughs> But we are here. Well, yeah, <laughs> it took me, uh, my friend's karate, my son's karate teacher took an hour out of her day to show me how to use it. So it, it's something <laughs> new. But it's a really effective tool, you know. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, now, yeah, apparently it's easy to spy on, but that's okay because we're, we're okay. we're doing this for the world, so yeah, I know. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have a, an intimate conversation with your with your better half on Zoom. You know, <laughs> never know where it will end up, so just be cautious. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much. All right, brother, thank you very much, Marcelo. I'll talk with you soon, man. Okay, man. So big hug for you guys. Uh, Ryan, kisses to your family. Dave, big hug for you and to your family. And then we we'll see you soon.
let's make some new music. Yeah. Uh, 